God only knows what you've been through.
Well, good evening, guys. Those of you joining us online and in person, we're so glad you're with us. We sing, he's coming on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. And kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts to clear his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is a lamb. The Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world, and His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before Him. Open up the gate. So open up. Make way before the King of Kings. For our God is here, for the God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring in power, in fire. Our battles, and every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before Him. stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord? Yeah. Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting on and every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before him. All right, thank you, Satellite Band. Welcome to Trinity Downtown. In our satellite service, we are here at uh, 1316 Washington Live Saturday nights at 5 o'clock uh, for the satellite service. If you're watching us uh, later during the course of the week on demand, uh, thank you for tuning in and joining, uh, joining along with us where we have the opportunity to lift our voices in praise, to be inspired by the Holy Word of God, and remember that we are precious and adored by God the Father so much so that he sent his son Jesus Christ to live, die, and rise again for us. A uh, couple announcements that I wanted to make. We've got actually three uh, upcoming in the next couple weeks, three new Bible study opportunities. Pastor Dorn's going to talk about one at the start of his message, and I'll let him do that. Uh, but Alpha is returning on um, Monday, October 4th. If you've been part of this fellowship, you've heard me talk about Alpha a lot. Um, Alpha is really, well, it's for anybody, and I would encourage members of Trinity Downtown for a couple reasons to take the class. It's really designed for those who have questions about faith, that those are not sure what they believe. So we've had people that are atheists that have taken this course, that are agnostics, but it's a safe place where they can hear 
the crystal clear message of what God's word says, but then challenge all of it. Ask the questions, wrestle with it. If you know somebody that maybe would be open to having conversations about faith, they don't have to be a believer, I encourage you to maybe take the class with them. Uh, if you want to find more out about it and you are a believer, a member of Trinity Downtown, and take it before you would ask a friend or a neighbor or a coworker to take it with you, uh, I encourage you to do that as well. Uh, you should be able to go right now to the trinitydt.org website, go into uh, the Bible su uh, Study Connection section. There'll be an alpha link. You should be able to uh, be able to register for that right now and look for some social media posts that'll be coming out in the next couple weeks. There is also starting on Tuesday. Um, September 28th, also virtual, just like Alpha, is a new young adults, uh, young adults study that's starting. Uh, they will be looking again virtually. That, that's going to be at 7.15 in the evening. They're going to be uh, using the videos and reading copies of Joining Jesus on His Mission. Uh, that was written by Pastor Greg Finke, who is our deployed missionary, uh, that has written this book and travels all across the country to promote, again, different ways on how to be an everyday mission. Um, there is no age requirement or restriction. Um, as my daughter often reminds me, age is just a number. So if you consider yourself a young adult and would like to do that, uh, reach out to me. There should be some information in the next week or so on our website as well. Uh, so talk to me tonight if you have questions as well. With that said, we welcome our God into this place as we begin in his name. We worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. darkness we were waiting with our hope with our light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a crown
reading from the book of Mark. Like, is it on? There we go. Thank you. A reading from the book of Mark, the ninth chapter. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. And he did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Holly. I, uh, I pray that you've had a relatively good week in the midst of the storm and everything that we have gone through. Um, some ups and downs and some, some storms rolling, in, um, rolling into your life, perhaps, too. You know, as we look at this scripture tonight that Pastor Dorn will expand on here during his message, you know, I'm reminded of so many times where I'm just like the disciples. You know, first of all, um, Jesus clearly reveals himself to me in his word. And sometimes I don't understand what he's saying. And I'm afraid to ask him, what, what do you want from my life? And I also know that I am argumentative. I think more highly of myself than I ought, that I don't humble myself, that I'm constantly looking to better my position. And I'm not childlike in my faith. And so if that's the synopsis of, of my life, I, I can imagine you could probably point to those times too, maybe even this past week. But we come into this place now and we have a God that despite our failing to leave up, live up to his standards, loves us so much that he will never, ever give up on us. But we do want to come into this time and this place and give him um, our word of apology, uh, tell him we're sorry, our word of uh, repentant hearts. And so we, we spend some time in, in prayer now doing that. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, Thank you for bringing us into this place. And thank you for loving us despite our shortcomings, our failure, our rebellion, our arguments where we just don't treat each other the way that you want us to treat people. We don't respond to you as our great and glorious God the way that we are. We have failed, Lord. We have failed to live up to that standard. And as we come into this place, we tell you tonight, we are broken by our sin. We are overwhelmed by it. And as we come into this place, we tell you that we are sorry. We pray that the old Adam, the old Eve in us, would again, by this confession, be drowned again today. That we would awaken as new men and new women made possible only by that message that Jesus talked about in tonight's scripture that the Son of Man goes to Jerusalem and he stretches out his arms and he dies and takes upon us, takes upon himself the burden of all of our sin and rises again. And for that, we know that we have eternal life as we call upon your name tonight. We pray, Lord, that you encourage us and give us the strength of your Holy Spirit to believe this unbelievable mystery. In your Son's name we pray, amen. Our Heavenly Father, in his great mercy, gives up his very own Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And for Jesus' sake, God the Father forgives us all of our sins. For you and I, who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives us the power to become the children of God and gives us his very own Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
we continue with our next song. Please pray with me. Father, as we look at your word tonight, continue to put us on that rock of Jesus Christ and to strengthen our faith at, that we might be ever more faithful in our journey in this life following you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, it's good to be here with you, and uh, great to have you with us if you're worshiping online, too. Um, I wanted to share with you, at, before I get started in the message, that uh, we're going to begin a new member class uh, starting with the first Sunday of October. So if you're interested in being a part of the uh, uh, ministries here at Trinity Downtown, We'd be glad to have you be part of our ministry. Membership has its privileges, so to speak, which is where I want to start with the, the message. You may be very familiar with the terminology VIP. Um, what does it stand for? Very important person, right? And uh, what I thought I would do tonight, starting off the message, is to 
show you some pictures of some people, and I'd like to, to know from you whether you consider them to be important or not. By, so if you think this is an important person that I'm showing you, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, all right? So let's start with this one. Dolly Parton. Okay, I saw a couple thumbs up, a few others not, you know, not so sure. Uh, I have to tell you, though, for me, she is an important person in our culture. She actually is a humanitarian in my book and, and has done some amazing things when you consider how she's been able to take the bling in her life, and she actually has strong faith, high moral standards, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Pretty amazing. How about this person? Do we know who this is? Alex Bregman? Oh man, if you're a, if you're a Houston Astros fan, you would be better be saying he's an important person. He's one of the most important players on the team, and if they're going to get to the World Series, he's going to have to be doing a great job. So he plays third base, by the way. How about this person? Very important person? Okay, seen a few thumbs up. I'd say so. Uh, as far as world standards, I mean, this is Tim Cook. He leads Apple. And if you appreciate Apple products, you know how important he is to that organization. How about this person? <laughs> yeah, thumbs up. Yeah. Talk about important to our country. Uh, she's in, this is Simone Biles, the, the most uh, tied as the most decorated gymnast in, in history. Um, it has done some amazing things and has spoken out and in, reminded people of the, of the importance of good mental health as well. How about this person? I see a couple thumbs up. Some of you are going, I can just tell by your expression, who's that? This is uh, Jared, Jared Isaacman. I didn't know who he was until just a few weeks ago. I'm a SpaceX person. I've been watching that kind of stuff. Jared is the commander of Inspiration4. He's currently orbiting the Earth at 357 uh, miles, I think, above the Earth, something like that. Um, and... He's a, a tech billionaire that spent a mil, hundred million dollars to uh, set up this flight and to take three others with him, and their hope is to raise an, uh, an additional hundred million dollars to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. So I would say an important person. Now, the reason why I wanted you to think about VIPs and about important people is because it's centered to our text, the reading that you heard. Um, we're looking at Mark chapter 9 right now. And if you'll recall, Mark chapter 9 begins with Jesus taking three of his disciples up on a mountain. And uh, he, Jesus there reveals, uh, we call it the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus has an opportunity to reveal a glimpse of himself and his glory. Something that the disciples all wanted to be a part of. When they came back down the mountain, um, they walked up on the other disciples and saw a scene of them arguing with scribes. And the argument centered around a child that they were not able to cast a demon out of. And uh, so Jesus has to step in, straighten things out, casts out the demon, and uh, the disciples have bruised egos over this. But uh, Jesus then takes them and they start on their way back out into the wilderness. Uh, because Jesus wanted to spend some time and just really teach them. And when he gets out into the wilderness, he says to them as they're walking along, and this, by the way, is the second time he's said this, he says, he tells them what's ahead for him. He says, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and when he is killed after three days, rise. Jesus is telling them he's going to be Crucified, rise three days later. Now the disciples, I mean, this is such shocking information that they don't even know what to do with that. And 
so they just, you know, doesn't make sense to them. I'm just going to set it aside. They don't even know what to ask. So they continue to walk along toward Capernaum, and as they're walking along, they don't want to talk about that. They've still got bruised egos over, uh, over the whole inability to cast out demons, and so they start talking about, well, remember when we were able to cast out demons, and then they get into an argument amongst themselves about who's the greatest, because that's much more fun to talk about. Who's the greatest here? And I'm sure they were all going around about it. And I'll bet you Peter, James, and John were right in there too saying, well, Jesus took us up on a mountain and didn't take you. (laughs) But when they get to Capernaum, Jesus takes them into the house. We think the house where Peter lived. And, And he asks them, so what were you guys talking about? on the road and they are silent because none of them wants to say anything about well we were talking about who's going to get to to be next to you in a position of power none of them wanted to admit it they were all ashamed by even the prospect of it but Jesus knew exactly what they were talking about and So he's going to straighten this out. Now what's interesting is the whole idea of greatness back then was a big deal. I mean, they were the people in the in 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 that part of the world, that ancient mind was all about wanting to be great. From everything to worship, to administration of justice, to where you sat for meals, to how you dealt with people. Everybody was concerned back then about the position of greatness. What makes them great? And we may go, yeah, I get it. Because we still today have issues with concerns over greatness. We argue who's the greatest baseball player. We argue about who's the greatest singer. And then when we start to put ourselves into the midst of things, then it becomes personal. Because you're concerned about greatness too. And so am I at times. Let me give you an example. You take number 39, and they're currently serving number 26. And what is your first reaction? Great, I'm number 39. No, your reaction is... This happens every time I get here. I always end up being 20 or more behind and I have to wait. How come they're not looking after me sooner? Right? You're concerned about yourself. Well, you think about this. Jesus was talking about, Jesus was talking about the ultimate act of servanthood in suffering, dying, and rising again. And the disciples are arguing about greatness. Yeah, they should be embarrassed. And honestly, with the number of times we think about greatness, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves too. Because in baptism, we're connected with Jesus, with that very act of servanthood, Jesus' death and resurrection. And instead, we're concerned about us being looked after. So the Lord found a chair in Peter's house, and he sat down, and when he sat down, he was really saying, guys, we need to chat. And so they all sat down at his feet, and this is what he said. If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. Now, this just doesn't make sense. I mean, Jesus, you've got to be kidding You want us to be last instead of first? Our selfish world constantly deals with first. We'll never make it in this world. If if I'm last instead of first, I'll never get to work on time, right? I mean, this just doesn't work. But Jesus says, no, this is the way it ought to be. This is the way it needs to be. So then Jesus, after trying to explain this a bit, says, 
sees a little kid running through the house. And he pulls this little kid aside and, and he says, here, this will be a better example for you to understand this. Whoever receives one little child like me, whoever see, receives this little child receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. The disciples were all tied up in wanting glory and greatness. Jesus says, in God's kingdom, it's the opposite. Just like with a little kid. Think about it. It, it. A little kid has wants and needs. And if you're a parent, you know you have to look after those wants and needs. If you can't ignore a little one that cries, you've got to do something about it. And so you take care of it. And once you've take care, taken care of it, you go, you go on to whatever. And, and is the kid going to say thank you? Most of the time not. But you stop doing what you're doing and you serve that child because that's part of your responsibility as a parent. So, Jesus is saying, this, that's how it is in the kingdom of God. We have a responsibility to serve others. Now, uh, so what does that look like for us? Because you see, we're really all VIPs. You're a VIP, and I'm a VIP in the kingdom of God. Because Jesus put us first. He considered you so important that he was willing to say, I'm going to go and die and three days later rise again so that you would be part of the family. That's how important you are. So what does it look like to be a VIP in the kingdom of God? Well, uh, it could be uh, you helping the lady next door, the single mom next door, to do some chores so that she can look after other stuff with her kids. Or it could be you baking cookies for the workers down the street at the nursing home or something like that. Or I'll give you another example of what it means to look like a VIP in the kingdom of God. Um, this happened to me on uh, Monday as Hurricane Nicholas was approaching. I went out to pick up some stuff because um, I thought, well, you might might not hurt to get an extra case of water, and I want to pick up pick up a few things for the house. And I thought on the way home I would top up my truck with gas, and so I pulled in at the Kroger, and there was a line of cars waiting their turn to get gas. So, and most of the cars were all facing the same direction, all in line. And when the vehicle in the, to the pump to my right pulled ahead, it opened up an extra spot that allowed me to move in a little sooner. So I thought, I'll, maybe you can get through this a little faster. So I switched pumps and went over to that one. And I waited and I waited and I waited because with everybody pumping at the same time, it was slow. Finally, the person ahead of me pulled out. But before she pulled out, I noticed that further out was this car sitting waiting with a turn signal on to pull in this way. This was an older lady, and, and uh, she didn't look very happy, and she was kind of waving at me like, I'm coming in there. And I'm like, I'm looking at her going, you are not, this is, this is, you're, in the, you're not in the line. What are you, what are you doing? You, you go around back over here. But I had read this text that morning, and I was like, I can tell she wants to pull in, and I'm like going, I, I, I don't have to put much gas in my truck. Well, all right. The lady in front of me pulls out. This lady in the blue car, I sit and wait. I thought, okay, I'll let her pull in. So she pulls in and pulls right up to the nose of my truck. She takes forever to get out of her car has to go over and pay cash at the, you know, and I'm like going, you've got to be kidding me. 
comes back, puts gas in her car, and, I, and I'm going, yeah, yeah, that's, it's the right thing was to let her do this. And she gets back in her car after, I don't know how long it was, it seemed like eternity, and so I thought, you know, I'm going to smile at her and wave. So I smile at her and I waved. She looked as unhappy as possibly could be. Didn't even acknowledge that I had given the courtesy of allowing her to come in. She slowly had to back out because I wasn't about to back up. And she drove away. And as I saw this and I watched this, then I was like, no. The right thing to do in the kingdom of God is to allow that to go and to say, let others, who knows what kind of day she had. She may, you know, everybody was trying to get ready for the hurricane. She may, she may have had kids waiting at home. She may have been frustrated or upset. It didn't look like she could move very well. I mean, it was the right thing to do. To be servant of all. And you probably saw examples of that too as you, as you got ready for the hurricane perhaps. Of people willing to help and support each other because we knew there could be some danger happening around here. By the way, if, if you do know of somebody that, that needs assistance coming out of this hurricane, we, um, please let us know um, so that we can offer assistance. I mean, that's part of modeling um, what Jesus did for us, that love for us in loving others. So it seems totally contrary to all of us who our sinful natures would say, I want to be first in line and you can wait your turn to do the opposite. But when we do the opposite, there will be times where people will go, oh wow, why did you do that? And all of a sudden, they get a chance to see God's love in action. And that's what we're called to do. Let's pray. Father, it seems so strange to say the last first and the first last, and yet that's what your Son is calling us to do. And so we ask that you would grant us a great measure of your Holy Spirit, um, to help us with our sinful nature that would say, I want to be first, to instead serve others, and in so doing, model just how important we are to you. We're grateful that you do call us VIPs in your kingdom, and we pray that we would represent you well. By the power of the Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
point in our worship, we are reminded that um, giving our, of our tithes and offerings is a gift of worship. And so for those of you who are worshiping with us and you'd like to leave a gift, uh, there'll be a box on your way out to the right of the doors. Uh, thank you for your continued support of the ministries of Trinity Downtown. If you are watching uh, sometime during the course of the week on demand and you'd also like to give a gift, you can do so at the website, trinitydt.org. Click on the giving tab. Uh, we're at 800 Houston Avenue, Houston, Texas, 77007. You're also um, well, certainly welcome to mail or drop a gift off at that address as well. Let's go ahead and pray tonight. Heavenly Father, again, as we come into this place, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that allows us to believe how much you love us, that despite our continual failures, you love us, that you choose us first, that we are VIPs in your kingdom. As we come before you, Lord, again, we pray for the community here in Texas and uh, throughout the Gulf uh, with the uh, the advent and the arrival of Nicholas. We would pray that members of our congregation and our community are restored with power and that their homes have not suffered tremendous damage. And we again, Lord, ask for the opportunity to reach out and support those in, in need um, as, we, uh, as we find uh, lead. We pray for our, our drummer and our brother Brian as he continues to uh, recover from his uh, motorcycle accident and continue to give him strength and full healing as he goes through his physical therapy that he would continue to be fully healed. And Lord, we just pray that you continue to be with us um, and we commend um, and combine all these things and pray uh, in the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you leave from this place tonight, you go with your great and glorious and um, redeeming God who is mighty to save. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Have a great week. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Cause Jesus made it all, all to Stay. He washed it white as snow.
great rest of your evening. Have a great Sunday. Have a great week. Go in God's grace and go in God's love.